welcome back um, everyone and um, let's look at how to configure uh, sd1 on fortigate firewall and also uh, be able to use uh, the feature of sd1 to do one link load balancing in being able to aggregate two isp link together for our users our internal users so that they can be able to you know have a level of resiliency when they um, try to access internet resources and all that. So probably we want to be able to you know, aggregate two ISP link together so that we can have a level of um, you know, much bandwidth for our users um, trying to have access to the internet. And also we can do a, a form of application steering in such a way that when one link fails or you know, is experiencing um, delay or any form of, of distortions or uh, I know that our applications and users can leverage on the second ISP and it won't impact our users' experience and all that. So you can have users with the environment that want to use um, Teams, uh, meetings, Zooms, all these collaboration uh, tools. And one ISP is misbehaving and you can easily switch to the second one. So the two ISPs are working concurrently uh, not one as a backup or failover. They are working concurrently and it's, and they're available for our users. So we use the SD1 feature on FortiGates to configure one link with balancing for our users so that they can have access to internet uh, on the street, uh, without any form of uh, bad user experience and all that. So we have two ISPs uh, connected to the FortiGates. I'm going to show you uh, in my lab. And we have a switch connected to our foot gate. Then we have users connecting to um the LAN and uh, the LAN uh, of our foot gate. So we have one link connected to the foot gate into other two ISPs connected on foot gate device. So um going straight to our device. So let's log into our foot gate device in admin. So on the foot gate device, we've already connected. If you come to the interface. Um, see our port two is um our port two is the first ISP you're using, which is one ninety one six eight hundred one forty two. Then we have the second ISP link, which is on zero dot one four three network. Then we have our internal um LAN sitting at one nine two one six eight one uh, one one three dot one six dot one as the gateway for our um our internal users and all that. So one of the things you need to do before you configure SD1 is that um, none of these interfaces should be, uh, should have been used in any firewall policies uh, within our FortiGate because you won't be able to um, you know, configure SD1 if all these interfaces has been used. So if you come to the firewall policy, uh, it should be empty. We have to delete this, let's delete this. It should all be empty so that we can be able to create our SD1. So now we have our three links, um, the two ISPs and our LAN link on the 40 gates. So coming straight to um, SD1, go to network and SD1. So one of the things we want to create first um, is to add the links um, into the zone. So you create new, create new zone. Let's create new zone and let's create that SD1. Then add members. No, let's create, let's just create. Okay. So we have a new zone named SD1. Then let's create new member, SD1 member. The first interface we want to add is the ISP1 interface, which is this. Then we have, you have to put it in, in the zone we just created, and it has to be the SD1 zone. Then give it the what's the gateway for this? It has to be 192.168.100.1. 168.100.1, then leave every other every other thing as default, click OK. So we have one member in the zone, then create new member. So add the second ISP to the zone, then gateway has to be 192.168.0.1, then click OK. So we have our SD1 zone created, ISP1 and ISP2 created. So the next thing we want to do is create a performance SLE. 
So yeah, one of the things you want to ensure is that you want to keep, uh, uh, you want to set up a performance SLA that will keep uh, monitoring those link uh, in order to determine their packet loss, latency, and tutor. And, you know, based on your environment and the kind of, uh, you know, applications you want to try and monitor and you want to try and, you know, uh, optimize your environment, you have, you have to set up that, you know, that performance SLA for those applications or for those internet resources. Seems. So uh, on that participant, we have to specify and create, add the two interfaces here. Then we can set up our SLE uh, target, SLE to latency, uh, let's say 100, um, Juta, let's say 15, then packet loss one. So we leave every other thing as default depending on this. So this, then we click okay. So as soon as we click okay, so once it is set up, let's set our static routes. Our static routes will be zero to zero. Then the interface will be SD1 um, using the two interfaces. Then we click OK. So. So I think we have an issue with Teams for the first user. So let's change it to uh let's change it to eight dot eight dot eight. So in changing to eight dot eight dot eight, we see that the two links are up. We have a real time link performance for you know for our for the links that we've um, added. So we have um ISP one and ISP two, port two and port three, the latency the delta and the packet loss and all that. And we see that um, ISP2 has, you know, 2% uh, latency than ISP1. Then the next thing we want to do um, is to configure the SD1 rule. So this is where you are going to now determine how the, the those, um, those link you've configured to, you know, to be used. So in creating an SD1 rule, so uh, let's name it internet access internet uh, access uh, for all users. So um, here, yeah, the address is source and all. It can be all the users. If you click select all, it means that all the users, all the IP addresses within the LAN network that you're, you know, if configured will be used. So select all. Um, here, yeah, destination, we also select um, all because we want them to have access to the internet. So here, um, looking at the admin interface, we have different uh, selection patterns, uh, strategy. The manual selection means that uh, once you select manual as your strategy, you can only use one, one uh, ISP per time. So when, this, when the first one goes down, you are going to manually you know, you know, uh, assign the second one uh, to function as well. You get so yeah, there is no level of intelligence that is being done using manual, and there is there are, there are cases, use cases where you want to use manual um, strategy for your users. But in this case, we are going to use um, lowest cost SLA. So if you use best quality, best quality means that uh, depending on the quality criteria that you are going to use, whether you tap packet loss, downstream, upstream, and all that, um, the performance of your link will be based on. Uh, the criteria that you've set here. So, for instance, if you select the two, uh, into preference as the two ISPs here, when you use best criteria, uh, best quality, it means that um, the the fourth gate is going to use the lowest um, latency of this of these two links in order to you know, pass users traffic. So, if ISP one has like IS1 has 3.38 um, uh, milliseconds and ISP2 has 29.33 milliseconds. For all your user traffic, your user traffic will be passed through IS, um, ISP1 at the moment at, by, by, by which he has the best quality, which is the best latency at that moment. 
if ISP1 now definitely has an higher latency than ISP2, Fortgate would change um, you know, the route so that your users will now use ISP2 as the best quality. The lowest cost SLA ensures that um, the two ISP link are used concurrently in such a way that they are within the threshold we've set for them. So uh, if you remember, we have threshold for the latency to be um, 100 milliseconds and the jitter is 15 milliseconds and all that. So far, the two ISP link are within uh, the threshold we've set for them and they, they didn't exceed that. Both of them would be used you know, concurrently for all of our users. If one of the ISPs, ISP link exceeds you know, the latency threshold we've set for them, uh, the, all the threshold we set for them um, in the performance SLA. The second one, the one that has exceeded those threshold will be removed while the first one is being used. So this ensures that um, it ensures best user quality uh, experience for your users because uh, either of the two, one will be used. And if the two meet the threshold with, with configured in the performance SLA, the two will be used. So we use this so that we can use uh, have an experience with you know the load balancing we want to uh, we want to use. Then the zone of preference will be the SD1 zone that we created, uh measured SLA, uh, the required SLA target will be what we configured in the performance SLA, which is team server. I'll change this to Google because one of the one of the ISP link was having issue with uh teams uh within the DNS of a domain or uh, Teams domain and all that. So we'll click on load balancing and um, we'll click OK. So once this is done, uh, the two ISP link will be used, you know, uh, for user traffic and all that. Let's look at the firewall policy. So you need to set up your firewall policy so that um, users can, you know, have access to the internet based on the protocols, services that you've allowed. So internet access. So application, global. Uh, home interface is your LAN interface. Your admin interface is your uh, SD1 interface. And source has to be all, which is all the IP addresses within this global LAN network. And destination has to be all, which is access to internet uh, resources. Then services all, you can choose each or any of these services, which is maybe HTTP or HTTPS, depending on what you what what you want to achieve. Then we are going to leave this nothing uh, on and use it as outgoing interface. Then um, what else? All sessions uh, allow log of traffic and all that. Then click OK. So once this is clicked, we have our services running and we need a test to see um, how it's working. OK, we have the two devices currently working. So what we want to do now is to unplug one and see but that was second. So you can see that the two are currently working hand in hand as load balancing. And another thing you can also do is that we can set up the algorithm. Come to um, network SD1, then come to SD1 rules, then we can come to implicit and edit, um, edit. Yeah, we can set up the algorithm as source IP session, spillover, destination IP, and all that. But um, this is just for you to play around. You can do based on sessions, um, select, you know, uh, set the number of weights for each of the sessions. The number of weights will determine how functional those IP, uh, those ISP would be in terms of passing traffic and all that. But I'll just leave it as default and click OK. So uh, the load balancing is working. We would see that port one and port, port two and port three are being used simultaneously, you know, by different, um, you know, by the same or different uh, devices within our, our network. And this 
is able to you know distribute those traffic you know across the isp that we have and you know we can be able to optimize users traffic so when one interface is down like so let's dis disable port three and see if um, we still have traffic for passing. So let's go to port three, then we disable it. So once this is disabled, it's no longer active, then you go to um, SD1, check this, this is disabled, the rules. So here we see that there's only one link as functional, then it seems one link is down and we only have one. So definitely we we'll still have access to the internet, so once you go to your logout with your port traffic, so once you check this, you see that port two from our device is port now is functioning. The ports general, saddle, data, and port three, port, port two, and ISP one, port ISP two and port two. So this has been disabled, and our port two is now working the way it's meant to work. So we're having access to you know all this with just our port two. This gives a level of resilience for you know our users, and you can be able to use those ISP links and get them together for all your users' traffic, and you know, bam, it's working. Then once this is all back, everything you know starts working the way they are meant to work. So let's go back. Let's check again. So I link is back up. As the one who's then zone. And when you check this, see that it's this port two, press port one. So literally, the uh, link, the traffic is being shared across the two ISPs. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe, like, comment. Bye.